to me. Perhaps they think that aligning with Iran is in the best interest of America as opposed to aligning uh, us with uh, Saudi Arabia. Maybe that's what they think. Maybe they think in the long haul Iran is a better ally. I lived in uh, Muslim countries for 12 years of my adult life doing government service. And I found 99% of the Muslim people that I dealt with to be as good as the best American Christian. Uh, they are absolutely against the principles of ISIS and what they stand for, and they are as afraid of ISIS as we are. Uh, I, no, I agree. I think you've heard. I think. Let's pause for a moment. Have you heard me express similar sentiments on this show? That I've said the average Muslim is more afraid of ISIS than the non-Muslim is because they're the ones who've suffered the most. Uh, that that's not going so far as to say that I trust the entire. Uh, Islamic thing. I don't because I think that a good portion of it has changed. In other words, when I spent years in the Fiji Islands, I had Muslim friends. I had Hindu friends. I had Christian friends. And the Muslim friends I had were never, ever espousing any of this stuff because it had not yet invaded their mosques. It now has permeated many mosques around the world. It's a different world uh, than it was 20 or 30 years ago. That is the Islamic world. I agree, and that's why so many of the Muslims are afraid of that movement, because they don't okay. want the world to go that way. One last thing, being from Oregon, I heard the comment, someone thought that uh, the uh, soft guys were going to go into you know, the remote wilderness area of Oregon and, and uh, you know, take action. The FBI would never allow soft guys to go in because the, the FBI teams are as well-trained and is well equipped, and they're the ones responsible, not the soft guys. And the soft guys. So, you, so you don't think that special ops are going to go in, and that's why the uh, promise keepers, the oath keepers, told them to get the women and children out of Oregon. Think soft is going to go in there? Absolutely not. So you're an ex government, you're an ex government uh, employee uh, living up in Eugene, Oregon. I can tell by your sentiments that you're rather middle of the road politically. Isn't that true? No, I'm very right wing, but I'm I'm fairly worldly. <laughs> I'm trying to see. No, because I thought your sentiments were pretty clearly down the middle and very rational. By the way, you're a very sober gentleman, and it's always a pleasure to hear uh, voices of sobriety uh, on the airwaves. Let me send you a gift, Government Zero. I think you'll enjoy it. I'll be back in a minute. I can't believe two hours have flown by like this. It's been a very long day for me. I mean, I was up at 6.30 in the morning, and last night was a storm out here on the West Coast, and I live right near the water, and i got to tell you something. Living near the water, near living near San Francisco Bay, is a pleasure most of the time, but when there's a storm, it's a little intimidating when the waves are crashing 15 feet from your bed, and you start to remember Noah's Ark, and you realize your house can't float. But uh, it's uh, one of those nights, you know, it leads to wild dreams. That's all I can say. But let's get back to politics. I know many uh, stations, most of my stations stay on for the third hour. I lose only a few. I lose a few stations and people are very depressed that they have to leave me. But, hey, third hour, I have KSFO in San Fran, KLIF in Dallas, FNC in Raleigh, DRC in Hartford, FTL in West Palm, KBET in Las Vegas, BOB in Jacksonville, GDJ in Albany, FTW Mobile, VLK in Lexington. I know these don't mean anything to you, but I'm a call letter freak. I love them because I grew up with radio call letters. VNN in Huntsville and KUGN in Eugene, Oregon. These are some of the top affiliates for the third hour that we have. So it's a huge audience with a whole hour for us to deal with on this program. Let's go to one caller right now on line number three, and that's in Washington, D.C., where the show is doing so well that it may be considered a crime. My ratings are so high on WMAL as a talk show that it could be eventually criminalized to have such high ratings in such a liberal city. John, on WMAL in Washington, what's on your mind? Yeah, Obama's news conference yesterday and, and his illegal executive orders on guns, the real agenda behind this is to set up a campaign issue for the fall which, with which to defeat Republican candidates. He's well, well, hold on, I, I tell you why I, I don't agree with you. They already own the, the anti-gun nuts. Why would this appeal to the anti-gun nuts anymore? He already owns them. It's, it's the, the soccer moms. They're not gun nuts. 
there's anxiety, growing anxiety about guns and safety of kids in schools and all that. Oh, so and in other words, the soccer moms with kids in school who might vote for Trump, he's thinking that this would scare them away, the gun violence issue? They they believe it. They they they're making. You you know on. something. You may you may have a point there because ultimately he's only a community organizer, and that's all he's interested in is gonna getting out the vote for the far left. So he's working for Hillary as as we suspect. Very good point. I think it's a keen anal keen analysis. I do. I'm sending you government zero for being so smart because it's a book for smart people. Uh, eight five five four hundred seven two eight two is the phone number. WABC in New York. Robert, before you leave us. Uh, in New York, which I've got to visit very soon again. Robert, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, North Korea, the saber rattling, probably encouraged by China. Every time they have a poor crop yield, they need food, medicine, and oil. They do it every time. And they figure if they rattle in the uh, Asian area, they look at South Korea, Japan, New Zealand, Australia, Indonesia to provide. I think China wants to cut ties because of the drain on the economy. Now that China is building uh, aircraft, building cars, also you got to remember the Chinese, 30 years ago, pushing oxen in a rice field, lashed to a wooden plow. Today, Rolexes, Maseratis, Italian shoes. You see where it's going? The Chinese, once they got a touch of comfort, they don't need North Korea no more. Well, what do they need North Korea for at all? I mean, North Korea doesn't produce the food and medicine that you say they need. So what do you mean they're using North Korea for food and medicine? For a good army, you know, to threaten all of Asia. Okay, so they're the junkyard dog that I said they are. So they're their mad dog that they let out and go growl and bark at everyone. What, you think they're going to get free food for that? Yeah, well, listen, in the past they did, but no more. But you got to remember this. If the hierarchy, you know, with the workers' people, you know, and the Communist Party in North Korea, if they ain't got food for that big army that they got, that big army is going to turn on them. They just might be a military coup. That's interesting, Robert. I, I do hear you on that, and you've said so many things that are worth relating to. I mean, if we were in a cafe, I could talk with you for half an hour right now, at least, on many of the things that you said about China. One of the things that sticks in my mind is how they've basically been corrupted in one generation by capitalism, which is a good thing. I think that's a great thing that they've gone from pushing a plow to driving a Bentley in one generation. I like that because now they're corrupted. They like the luxury items. The problem is when you have a billion people who want luxury items, there's no economy on earth that can keep churning out uh, an increase year in and year out to provide that, those luxury goods for those people. It has to come to an end at some point, doesn't it? Uh, well, you know what? It does if they begin to isolate and if the international community goes and crashes down on China, but it's not going to happen. They're so entrenched into the global market today. We're going to do everything we can to, you know, keep China afloat. But the deal is good. All I can say is I like reading that Bentley is one of the biggest selling cars in China. I mean, the biggest market for Bentley is China. I like that. That's a good thing. It's better that they're driving Bentleys than shooting Kalashnikovs at us. And so I say, you know, hey, let's see capitalism corrupt them even further. Maybe they'll become an even better ally of ours, and maybe they will eventually stop the saber rattling. I'm an eternal optimist. I appreciate you listening on WABC in New York City when I return. Another big hour right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Well, we're all talking about uh, the a the H bomb now. And that's what we're talking about. We don't know whether uh, it's an H bomb or an A bomb or whatever, but we do know that North Korea has sent jitters throughout the world, 
And my opinion is it's China pulling their strings, and it's to cover up what's going on in China right now, because there's no reason for this. came out of the blue. Why would they do this all of a sudden? Well, the Chinese stock market's in trouble. China is escalating emergency intervention in the stock market. It's a distraction. They've also uh, re re um, reorganized, you want to put it to you that way, in other words, rigged their currency. So what has happened as a result? Obama says nothing. North Korea claims it detonates an H-bomb. Even Hillary slams North Korea. And Obama is silent. The day after attacking gun owners, he has nothing to talk about when it comes to H-bomb owners. How's that possible? That's uh, one of the main topics we're talking about on the Savage Nation. And we invite your calls uh, at 855-400-7282. That's 855-400-SAVAGE. And I don't want to talk anymore about the gun thing from yesterday. But I do want to play a few things that are important, maybe related to it, maybe not related to it. And that would be Donald Trump on Obama's executive orders in clip number seven. You need to hear this. Go ahead, please. As far as uh, the executive order that he really is doing, number one, before you even get into the guns, I'm totally Second Amendment that we can't be messing with it. And frankly, if we had situations in California or in our military bases, and even in Paris, if they had a couple of guns in the room, you wouldn't have had 130 people killed and many, many people very, very gravely injured. And that includes California. You would have had a much different situation. But as far as the executive order, you're not supposed to be doing it with executive order. You're supposed to get the congressman, get Congress in, negotiate a deal. All right. As you would expect, Trump respects the Constitution. And he's the, uh, the opposite of Obama, who doesn't. And we don't have to talk about the gun issue, but uh, it, it's interesting to me that a day after Obama comes out with this teary-eyed, crazy rambling it was a rambling castro-esque escapade that went on forever it was not thought out it was emotional it just went on and on with the tears and the next day an h-bomb goes off or an a-bomb and he has nothing to say suddenly he's hiding where is he now another vacation why is he saying nothing don't you think that the president of the united states owes the world and the people of america some sign of a spine and in leadership instead of a constant attack upon people in the middle class? That's all he does. You know, as I said, we've gone from Teddy Roosevelt, who said walk softly and carry a big stick, to Obama, who talks loudly and carries a limp stick. He's very tough when it comes to the American middle class, with whom he has no qualms to intimidate at every level. He feels he has absolute power over the American middle class. And he manipulates us and frightens us and scares us. And there's a demographic involved that's, that's pretty clear to anyone who studies it. I don't want to go down that road again and be accused of what I'm not. But when it comes to real bullies, real threats to survival on the planet, he has nothing to say. And what do you have to say about that? Let's take some calls from around the country. Let's hear what you have to say. Internet Marina, welcome to the Savage Nation on line five. Go ahead, please. Your opinion counts. I think uh, radical Islam is behind of all this uh, nuclear bomb with Korea. Who is attacking the U.S. right now? Not Korea, not Chinese specifically. Who is bombing uh, Europe and America? You, why would you think it's... Which part of radical Islam encouraged North Korea to do the test? Uh, they need somebody to support them. I think they need to find a coalition against the uh, United States. Oh, so you're saying that the, the Sunni leaders of this maniac cult of ISIS is aligning themselves with the terrorist state of North Korea? would make sense. I think that they would go for anything, just not to lose the war. So, in other words, an axis of evil is emerging again, which is a, a rogue a state like North Korea with the insane rapists in ISIS, who else would be in that that coalition of evil? Who else would be in it? Well, well at this point, I would doubt 100% about China, but I think there are people who would support. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a question about China. You can be 100% wrong and 100% right yeah. about China. So I, I assume that you are just, I'm not trying to be invasive. Are you from Russia? Yes, I am. 
And the reason I ask is because most Russian people I know are super literate when it comes to politics, having studied their own system for so long. And you are obviously...